How's it going folks? In this video, I'm testing out the new hardware security keys feature found in iOS 16.3 beta one. And this allows you to use physical keys as a second factor for your two factor authentication. And it also supports NFC as you can see right there, but that's not all I want to talk about. I also want to discuss what it means to enable more frequent updates for live activities. And I'm going to show you what it's like to use iCloud.com with advanced data protection enabled. All this and more in this video. Check it out. Okay, so first of all, let's talk about the more frequent updates for live activities that Apple actually released with iOS 16.2. But I wanted to go a little bit more in depth and discuss what actually happens, what are the consequences of enabling more frequent updates. So I'm in the TV app, which to my knowledge is the only app thus far that supports more frequent updates and of course, the TV app lets you follow certain sporting events like NBA games and get live updates as to what's happening in those games within the dynamic island and on the lock screen as well. So here's my second iPhone and I'm going to basically just do the same thing within the TV app, follow that game, but I'm going to go into settings, TV, live activities, and you're going to see here the more frequent updates option which is the update rate. Now, this allows for more frequent updates to let you see more real-time information, but it can also drain your battery faster because it's updating more frequently, right? So I enabled it on that phone, and then on this one, I'm gonna keep it disabled. So this allows me to compare the two and see what differences there are. So the phone on the left has more frequent updates enabled, the phone on the right does not. So you can see right off the bat when the lock screen times out on the phone with more frequent updates enabled, you can see that the time has those dashes. See that? But when you wake the screen, you'll notice that the updates are more frequent and thus closer to real time as to what's happening in game. Now here you can see a little bit better. The phone on the left has more frequent updates enabled. You can see the clock counting down more frequently than the clock on the right. And this is not as easy to show on a basketball game. It works very well with football, uh, soccer, because the clock is always running. Now in 16.3, you're gonna notice that you get a new splash screen to promote Apple's new Apple Music Sing karaoke feature. Be sure to check out my previous video where I walk through Apple Music Sing. And you also get a new tutorial that shows you how to transfer music and control your HomePod just by bringing your iPhone nearby. I think a lot of people forget this is a thing, so that's a nice reminder. So in 16.3, Apple introduced support for hardware security keys that are FIDO2 certified. And this is one of them. I bought this off Amazon for 25 bucks. I actually purchased two of them. You'll see why in just a second, but yeah, 25 bucks for each of these security keys. They are FIDO certified and they support both USB A connectivity and NFC connectivity, so you can wirelessly authenticate with an iPhone. Now with that being said, this feature is not targeted to everyday users. This feature, as Apple says, is designed for users who often due to their public profile, face concerted threats to their online accounts, such as celebrities or journalists or members of the government. This is an opt-in feature and the security keys will strengthen Apple's two-factor authentication by requiring a hardware key as one of those two factors. And that replaces the six digit verification code, which would prevent even an advanced attacker who uses a phishing scheme to gain access to that targeted account. So again, not something that everyday users probably want to enable, but nonetheless, very cool. Let's venture into the settings app. We're gonna tap our account at the top and then select password and security. And once that loads up, you're gonna see two-factor authentication is enabled, of course, but below that, you're gonna see a new button there, add security key. So you tap that and then you'll see a splash page for third-party hardware security key support. So you see strongest account security, Physical keys provide strong protection against phishing and unauthorized access, and these physical keys replace the security codes that we normally use as our second factor of authentication. Now, just like last video, I got this error message when trying to enable advanced data protection. Well, same thing here. This device is too new, so I'm gonna have to log in and use my iPad instead for this. The good news is I have this little adapter, USB-C to USB-A adapter, just plug in my security key like that, and I can interface with the iPad. Of course, the iPad does not have support for NFC, so I'm gonna need to physically plug it in, but we're gonna head back over to the same section, password and security, tap where it says add security keys again here on the iPad, 
And now we're just going to add those security keys. I'm going to show you how to do it. So I'm going to go ahead and tap the add button. Now, here's the thing. You need two security keys so that in the unfortunate event that you lose one, you can still access your account. Otherwise, you're going to be locked out. So you definitely want to store these keys in a safe place. The good news, you can add more than two security keys. Two is the minimum that you need to set it up, but you can add even more than that. So verify your iPad passcode, and then it's going to ask you to insert the first key. So I'm going to do that right now. There's no NFC, so I can't actually like tap like I would on an iPhone. I'll show you that later. But here you plug it in, you see the little green light, and then you just simply tap the little button there and it adds your key. That simple. So it's going to ask you to give it a name. So you can give it a unique name, Jeff's key A. Tap next. And now it's time to add the second key. So you just want to pop out the first one, put in the second one, tap the little button here. And the second key has been added. Now you want to give that second key its own unique name as well. All right. So next you want to review your active devices. Make sure there's no devices on your account that you don't recognize. I'm all good here. So I'm going to tap stay signed in to all. And now you can see the message. Your security keys have been added. So you want to store those in a separate safe place. You'll need your Apple ID password and one of your keys to sign into your account going forward. Now let's talk about how to manage your physical security keys. So you just want to tap security keys there and you'll see each key with its unique name. Uh, of course, you can add additional keys right from this interface as well. But if you tap on one of the keys, you can see when the device was added, rename or remove. Now you can't remove this one because you need at least two keys at any given time. So you have to add one first before removing that key. And of course you can remove all keys and this will basically revert you back to using the six digit codes as your second factor for your 2FA setup. Okay, so now let's talk about actually using your security key. So I'm gonna log into my iPhone with my Apple ID and you can see it's requesting the security key, not the six digit code like normal with the two factor setup. And there's no option to like revert back and try to get a code. No, you need to use your security key in order to log in. So I'm just going to hold my key right behind my phone like that. And it uses NFC to read it and authenticate. So that's why it's so important not to lose these keys because otherwise you're not going to be able to authenticate. Like I said before, most people probably don't want to use the security keys. They just want to stick to the six digit code because that's honestly a lot easier and more convenient in my opinion. As a courtesy, Apple shoots an alert to your other devices to let you know that you did log in with that security key. Now, so we're logged into this device and if we go to password and security, you can see two factor is enabled on this device and your security keys are present as well. So it pretty much works like expected. Now, what about when setting up a brand new device from scratch? What happens then? Well, you'll see. It's going to ask you for your security key and we're going to authenticate using NFC and it authenticates just like that. Now, what is it like to remove keys? Well, I'm going to show you just going to tap remove all keys. So you're no longer going to be able to use your security keys when you sign in and it will revert back to that six digit verification mechanism for your second factor. So your security keys were removed when you sign in to your account on a new device or on the web you'll need to use the verification code that is pushed to another one of your devices just like that. Finally, let's revisit the flagship feature from iOS 16.2. That of course being advanced data protection. Now this of course will enable encryption end to end on many more different iCloud data types like photos and reminders and notes. What I didn't show you on the last video is what happens when you log into iCloud with advanced data protection enabled. So we're going to go ahead and log in using our Apple ID. Just tap the continue button. So you see the message there. And once we're logged into our iCloud account, that's all well and good, right? But here's the thing. Since ADP is on, iCloud.com does not have access to display some of the data that is in the end encrypted, such as photos. So what's going to happen here? You tap photos. It's going to send in access requests to one of your eligible devices. So you can see it right here. So that trusted device will provide the decryption key so that you can access that iCloud data. So if you hit cancel, you're not going to be able to log in, but we're going to try it again. This time we're going to allow access, which will provide the key necessary 
to access your iCloud photos. So you also get a notification saying iCloud.com has access to display your photos until you sign out. And you can access any of the various encrypted items here as long as you don't sign out first because you already gave access prior. But you'll notice you do get a notification for each time you access one of those data types. So ladies and gents, that has been a hands-on look at iOS 16.3. If you appreciate videos like this, be sure to hit that subscribe button and also thumbs up for more. And be sure to check out my hands-on walkthrough of iOS 16.2 where I discuss its changes and features. Until next time.